there's a huge splodge on my monitor. I wish you guys could see it. It's because I was drinking Pepsi and all of a sudden I burst out laughing and it really comes out jetting through my nostrils onto the screen. Uh, I was reading the Afghanistan papers, the secret history of the war. And you have various U.S. soldiers and officers describing their experience in Afghanistan. Right. So get ready, because this is the funniest thing that you're going to hear the entire year. I, I'm not even hyping it up. So you have Major Thomas Clinton, a Marine officer, who says that the Afghanistan soldiers he trained were no different than the average Americans. They wanted access to roads, schools, water, and other basic services. But he said it was hard to explain to them how the American system of government paid for such things. The Afghanistans think that the Americans have money coming out of their asses. Clinton said, okay, get it, get it. Like this, this is the best part. I talked about taxation and all this stuff. They asked what the taxes are. I started explaining it was much like the warlords who used to tax people. And the Afghanistani look at the officer and go like, oh, sure, that, that sounds like stealing to me. That, that is a little bit haram. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence is when you go to university and you read a lot of books and memorize what's in the books. Wisdom is when you inherently feel that something is off. Like you can't really articulate it. You you, you don't really have the words to say it. But like the Afghanistani people is like, oh, sure, you know that, that that's like stealing. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to explain the whole tax thing. The officers were enthralled because they didn't have any concept of taxes. <laughs> There's no real concept of a central government that has all this overreaching power from Asabad to Herat, in the west down to Kalat and Kanadahar, in the south and Spin Baldak and Mazahari Sharif to the north, he said. So that's an education. <laughs> They have a very long history of being loyal to their family and their tribe. So the guy sitting out in uh, Chakagaragan, sorry, I can't pronounce it. I'm, I think it's uh, Chaghakaran, could really care less who President Hamid Karazai is and the fact that he's in charge of Kabul. <clears throat> it reminds me of monthly Python movie where the king goes riding by some peasants in the dirt and the king rides up and says, I'm the king. And the peasant says, what's a king? <laughs> Yeah, but like, okay, so y you got to really understand the concept here. Um, usually the people who were recruited for the Afghanistan uh, National Army uh, were peasants and farmers. And as it was pointed out here, like they come from a very traditional and hyper conservative ideology where the clan and the family is the most important thing. And you know, they, they probably share everything they have with their family and their clan, but they, they don't really understand the idea. It's like, okay, we have a central government and we all pay taxes. And then the government and its infinite benevolence is going to construct roads for us. They, they don't really believe in that. Okay. They're, they're a little bit more untrustworthy, <clears throat> but it's not only that. It's also the, um, the, the, the fact that when they interact with Americans, they don't interact with the people from Detroit. They don't interact with the homeless from Chicago. They interact with U.S. soldiers whose pay is indeed colossal compared to what a person from Afghanistan makes. Um, and, you know, the, the U.S. officers and, and the citizens there. And in a way, you know, like they, they probably think about it. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. Like the American back home gets taxed and the government then sends money to the Kabul Gender Studies University. Like does the American at home want that? Is he asked? No, well, th th that's not like stealing, sir. That, that is like stealing. It's, it's haram. Boku. Boku haram. <laughs> you know? But, uh, okay. Here's uh, another interesting thing. Imagine if they explain to them the concept of inflation. It's like, how, how does the U.S. president make roads nowadays? Well, he's like, we don't have the money for it because we locked down the economy. But what we can do is we can print money. And then the money printer goes like... Pfft. And the dollar comes out. Uh, imagine explaining that to him. And it's like, it, it really is like shitting money. 
I wonder if the president, uh, if, if the sheep herder from Afghanistan would have been like, Bashar, what, what would happen with the prices if there's way too much money in the circulation? I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. We'll worry about it later. We're going to worry about it in 30 years down the line. Not our problem. You know, money printer goes. Anyway, right, I, I found this absolutely amusing, just the most hilarious thing that I have seen. It's like explaining taxes to, to someone that never thought about it, and literally, like, the first thing that they're, like, that that, that sounds like stealing. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section, I'll see you there.